Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review. Today I'm looking at some extremely inexpensive rolling stock from AliExpress. <laughs> We live in a world where even a simple piece of newly tooled rolling stock can cost you up to £50, and so today's models I think could be very interesting for a lot of people. I found today's wagons on AliExpress, but I ended up buying them from the manufacturer's website, and that's Eve Model. Now, generally speaking, the price on the manufacturer's website is roughly the same as on AliExpress usually, but on this occasion I had a voucher for 10% off, which I got from a previous purchase, so I decided to get it from Eve Model's own website. That said, the price of today's models is $20.99, which works out at about £17.60. Not a lot of money for what is quite a large piece of rolling stock. So I've bought quite a few of these things to show today, but here is one of them right now as it arrived. Yeah, as you can see, a very large piece of rolling stock, and the level of detail looks, from outside of the box at least, to be fairly good for that amount of money. Now, is it fair to compare this with the likes of the Backman Dancehall Brake Van or another piece of rolling stock from over here in the UK? No, probably not, because this wagon is not advertised as a realistic model of a really specific prototype. I suspect that these are just generic box cars, so they can be manufactured in higher quantities than, let's say, an SEC or brake van. But to the customer who's not too interested in getting something specific, this is a good, inexpensive way of getting some rolling stock that is hopefully quite decent. I also have no idea what the level of detail or the quality of these wagons is like, as I've not had any of them out of these boxes yet. But there are some interesting options in buying these. For instance, you can get undecorated versions of the models that look like this. So this is exactly the same thing as the other green van, except it doesn't have any paintwork on it. And sure enough, you can get these even cheaper if you don't want the decoration. So these on EVE Models website are $18.99, $2 cheaper, which works out at about £17.60. So that's pretty cool, as you can buy one of these and put whatever you want on it, if that's what you decide to do. And it also gives us some idea of how much it costs to decorate a wagon of this sort, approximately $2. Anyway, let me show you what other wagons I bought from this range, and more importantly, let's get them out and let's see what they're like. So I bought six of these wagons at a total cost of £103. Three of them have decoration on them and three of them do not. But either way, this does seem to be a very inexpensive way of buying quite a lot of rolling stock for not too much money. Having said that, what are they actually like? What's the quality like? Are they accurate in any way? Well, that's what we need to figure out. So, let's start taking a look at these. Uh, this is an MDT refrigeration van, and I looked this up online, and sure enough, there does seem to have been some sort of box van that looks just like this. Whether the details of this model match that exactly, I'm not entirely sure, but at least they haven't just made these up entirely by the looks of things. If I show you the end of the box here, you can see some features. They've got blackened machine metal wheels with RP25 contours. Um, interesting, I don't think they were blackened, but we'll see. Body mounted couplers, okay. Non-magnetic brass axles with needle point bearings, that's fairly standard. Perfect to be used in model railroad layout absolutely perfect apparently and if i show you the back of the box you can see that eve model has been manufactured model railway accessories for more than 10 years and basically there's not much to learn here except that they do say that they have their own product designers constructors and factories which suggests that you can't just buy this model from another manufacturer under a different name although maybe they do supply other retailers and manufacturers i'm not sure Anyway, there's not much else to learn on the box, so let's pull this thing out. Here we go. So I do own quite a bit of EVE model rolling stock, and I have to say, even though the level of detail in many cases isn't anything to shout about, the performance of some of the EVE model wagons I have is better by far than a lot of much more expensive models. 
Anyway, let's pull this out, see what it's like. Oh yeah, it seems all right. So first things first, yep, the weight seems to be absolutely fine. Plenty of that. We do have metal wheels on this, although they're definitely not blackened as far as I'm concerned. And as the box said, yes, we do have body mounted knuckle couplers. Most of the EVE model stuff that I've looked at in the past has had the European style hook and loop couplings, but these have American knuckle couplers. Yeah, the decoration looks really nice. I like the way the roof is painted different color and the finish is really decent on that as well. Uh, we'll take a much closer look at the level of detail and the quality of the decoration in just a second. But yeah, I would say good value, basic detail, but adequate detail for the money. All right, so let's have a look at what appears to be the same wagon, but without any of the decoration at about $2 cheaper. Let's have a look at this. No accessories, by the way, yet they just come as they come. And here it is. So you get a much better sense, I suppose, of what the model actually is without the decoration. Uh, yeah, very, very basic, in fact. And the doors don't look very realistic at all now that they don't have the decoration on. And I'm going to go ahead and say, unless you are wanting to decorate these yourself, then you are much better off to pay the extra $2 and get the decoration because this doesn't look anywhere near as good. And uh, I think you would struggle to do a better decoration job for $2. If you want to customize it though, then obviously this would be worth it. But yeah, besides that seems to be the same. It doesn't have zero decoration. The top of the model and the ladders are still in the different colors. So I would call it a sort of semi painted wagon. All right, let's bring in the ones I showed to start with then. Let's have a look at these two. Let's have a look at the decorated one to start with. So this is Grand Union Food Markets. Again, Grand Union is a real, I think, supermarket chain in America. I can't find a picture of a wagon looking exactly like this, but it's a real company. <laughs> Whether Eve Model are licensed to use their name or not, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know if they're called Grand Union Food Markets. I think they're just called Grand Union. So maybe they're just taking a liberty with that. I don't know. But let's have a look. And yeah, with the paintwork around the doors, this looks quite a lot better. They actually look like doors rather than just some markings on the side of the wagon. But again, the quality of the decoration is absolutely fine on this. It looks good. The finish is nice as well. Quite a few printed details, actually. Uh, the couplings and the wheels all look to be absolutely fine. I've noticed that some of these knuckle couplers are a little bit stuck, but if you push them backwards like this, then they do seem to loosen up. So that's fair enough. Okay, very nice. Grand Union Food Markets. Let's have a look at the bare one. I think with hindsight, I might have been better just to have bought one undecorated box van just to show what they were like and then perhaps get the rest decorated because there was a fair choice. Um, but maybe I'll maybe I'll try and come up with my own decoration for these. That could be a fun project for the future. But yeah, much the same wagon really, just in a slightly different colour and uh, the lack of decoration is much the same as before. So fair dues. All right, we've got two more. Not green, not white, but a sort of rust colored, I suppose. So again, let's have a look at the decorated version. Uh, this is the same as the first one I, un I unboxed by the looks of it. It's the, yeah, the MDT Merchant's Dispatch Refrigerator line, ventilated refrigerator, but uh, in a different color, I like to say. Let's pull this one out. So yeah, some nice variety here. I've got six vans, all of them different. So you could put a very nice varied consist together if you wanted. All right, so yeah, it seems to be just a different colored version of the first one we looked at. Uh, less detail picked out around the doors by the looks of things, which is interesting. But yeah, it looks fine. Yeah, nice finish yet again, quite good quality. Feels good and sturdy. Yeah, very nice. All right, and then there is one more to look at. <laughs> Probably the least attractive of them all. It's just the poo colored wagon without any decoration on it whatsoever. Well, that's not true. No, parts of it are decorated by the looks of it, but it doesn't have any lettering on it or any of the door detail picked out. Let's see. Yes, quite unpleasant, really. <laughs> this is probably going to be the one I want to decorate if I'm going to do it. But yeah, besides that, the quality, again, is fine. It seems to be consistent with the others. 
absolutely no problem with this at all. So let's pick one of the nicer ones. I guess we'll go with old Grand Union. I suppose that's the nicest one in my opinion. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at the level of detail. I don't think it will take long, but then let's get them onto the track and let's give them a go. That is what I'm interested in. So there it is up close and personal for you, the Grand Union Food Markets box van from Eve Model. And does this van have the same level of detail as a new expensive Backman model? No, it doesn't. And does it have the same complexity and quality of a new Acura scale wagon? No, it certainly doesn't. But it also cost £17.60 and it is okay. The quality is good, the detail is adequate. It's a substantial wagon. It weighs in at 75 grams versus the 45 grams that the 50 pound dance hall brake van cost. So you definitely get more substance for your money than you do buying other models. And the fact that these seem to have some sort of basis in reality is quite pleasing. The fact that these companies do exist in real life and they haven't just been made up by the manufacturer adds some sort of value to the model, in my opinion. I don't know what right the manufacturer has to use some of these brand names and whatnot. I'm not going to comment on that. Maybe they've tweaked them a little bit to get around the legality of that. But no, the fact that you can look up some of these wagons and find photos of real life vehicles that approximate these models means that these models are a step above the just made up trash that you can get on AliExpress. But let's take a closer look at this thing, see what this is like. So the decoration is okay. Like I say, the finish on the model is legitimately good. You've actually got a satin finish going on here. Some of the text on the side of the van is a little bit difficult to read because it's been printed onto quite a, a tricky texture there with the planking, but most of it is legible, I would say. And there is quite a lot of text, as you can see. The decoration does go beyond the text though, like I say, here's a closer look at some of the printed detail on the doors, which makes those stand out fantastically. And on the ends of the model, you've got a little bit more print work as well. All of the wagons I've bought seem to be relatively simple in terms of their decoration, but for the money, I would say adequate. Let's take a look at some of the detailing then. So the bogies have a little bit of detail on them. You can see the axle boxes and the springs, nothing crazy going on here. And the wheels to me do not look blackened. They just look like regular metal wheels. That again is fine for the money, although it did say on the box that the wheels were blackened. I don't know, would you consider those blackened? I'm not sure. And the underframe detail on the chassis is actually really good. It is quite simple in that it is all just molded but the quality of the molding here is fantastic. There's all kinds of detail on here and I would say it looks really, really good. The bodywork is very, very basic. All of the detail here is just molded on the side, except for this ladder, which does seem to be separately fitted, although it does seem fairly chunky. It's not a fine wire ladder, as you might expect from some sort of high quality manufacturers, but it's okay. On the end, there is perhaps even less detail, quite a bit more molded, I suppose, but all of this is just literally that part of the molding. Fairly chunky looking, not particularly convincing. Although we have got this wheel here, which is a separate piece, and I can confirm that all of those are fitted correctly on all six models I bought. And things like the rivets also look quite good, fairly fine, not bad at all. You have got these knuckle couplers. Yeah, there's a closer look. I can't really confirm whether these are plastic or metal. Um, normally though, the metal ones, you can sort of definitely tell they're metal. I'm not getting that from these, but they do seem a little bit sturdier than some of the cheapest plastic ones I've used. So we'll just have to see how they work. If they all couple and stay coupled, then they will be absolutely fine. Up on top, there is quite a lot of detail on the roofs, which is good because this is what you're gonna be looking down on. Up close, I think it looks a little bit chunky, really, but hey, at least it's there and it was just 17 pounds. So at the end of the day, we've got a decorated wagon here with a fair level of detail, metal wheels, relatively modern, decent amount of weight. I don't think you can complain too much for 17 pounds 60. And like I say, if you want this without the paintwork on it, you can get the same wagon for £15.92. And even though this isn't the most detailed in the world, 
there are no British based manufacturers that quite offer this kind of value for money. When you think that uh, a metal axle like this can cost one pound or more, the fact that we have four of them on this model plus the model as well is very, very impressive. But these wagons are no good if all they do is look decent. I'm going to put them down onto the track. I will find out if they are free rolling. We will test the couplings and see how they get on in service. So join me for that. Let's get started. So here is today's track test setup. I've got all six vans or boxcars down onto the track coupled together. And today's loco of choice is the Walther's GP9 because it has compatible couplings and it's also a good reliable runner. So what are these boxcars like in terms of performance? And the answer is absolutely, utterly useless and unusable. I'm very surprised. I've had great experiences with EVE model rolling stock in the past, but these are absolutely awful. The first sign of a problem came when I did the Gordons Hill rolling test. I let each wagon roll down to see how free they are, and noticeably they were doing really badly, consistently badly, not making it even as far as the signal box in basically every case. And if you look carefully, it looks like they suddenly lose momentum as if they're sort of crashing into something. Well, upon investigation, it turns out that it is these little pins that drop down from the couplings. I don't use these myself, but I believe they are used for automated uncoupling of the knuckle couplers. But as you can see, compared with another model, these little hooks drop way, way lower than they do on other models. And as a result, these little pins, they touch the sleepers, they drag along ballast. And on Hornby track, at least, I can't speak for other brands, they hit point work, they hit power tracks, and they just completely derail. Unusable, utterly, utterly unusable because of that. I'm not even sure if they would be useful for uncoupling because they're free to turn, they're loose. <laughs> so really, really bad. Now, obviously the solution is fairly simple. You just trim those down and then they don't catch on things anymore. And some people get upset with me when there is a simple solution to fix a fault and they say I shouldn't criticize manufacturers for it. But I completely disagree with that. I think if a model has a fault, I don't care how easy it is to fix. It needs to be called out and it needs to be criticized. And even though the fix for this fault is fairly straightforward, I'm not sure how effective these little pins will be now at uncoupling, if that's what you want to do with them, because now they're a significantly different shape than they were before. There's also a certain tightness in the rotation of the bogies, which also stops them from being great runners. Um, the wheels though are great. Yeah, they're good quality wheels. EVE model wheels are really good. They're very free rolling and very straight. They don't wobble. But the other design aspects of these cars means that they are really, really poor straight out of the box. Anyway, let's send the GP9 backwards and let's see how another manufacturer's coupling will actually work with these things from EVE model. And I should also say that these cars did not couple together well here on the track. Normally you can just push this sort of rolling stock together and it couples. With these it took a good few attempts. So not too impressed with the couplings. Let's try this. No, not seem to have worked there. Let's just check both are in the right place. So the Walther's coupling is straight. The EVE model coupling doesn't seem to be. Let's try one more. One more. No, still not got it. Now, I'm sure this Walther's locomotive is okay in terms of couplings. I'm, I'm pretty sure it performed well in its review, but let's verify that with a wagon from a different manufacturer. This is a Backman Hopper. Make sure everything looks good. Okay. Yes, coupled. So, yeah, even with repairs, the EVE model couplings are not great. Now, I assume, like as with the cars themselves, once you actually manage to manhandle the couplings together, that they will work and stay coupled. I don't know that for sure. There we go. But we'll try that out. We'll get this lot going around the track. And if it stays coupled, then that's something. But really, in terms of functionality, uh, yeah, these cars are seriously lacking. 
Rolling stock is fairly basic. There's not a lot that it has to do in order to be effective. And these cars from EVE model are falling down at every hurdle, which is such a shame because those open wagons I've got from EVE model with the European style couplings, absolutely tremendous. They are some of the best performing models I have. These are much, much worse. Maybe it's just the knuckle couplings. Maybe if these had EVE models European couplings, they would be a lot better. Anyway, off we go. Let's go for a bit of a freightish speed then, about 40 odd on there. Let's see if they stay on the track. I haven't tried this yet, so this ought to be interesting. Okay, the first lap. Let's see what happens. So because of the stiff bogies, they're not great on curves. And actually the loco does seem to have slowed down quite a bit since going onto these curves. So yeah, drag increases on curves slightly. At the moment, everything's stayed on the track though, which is good. <laughs> Every cloud has a silver lining, I suppose. And it still seems to be on the track, yeah, everything's on. So with some fixers, you can get these to run along properly. At the moment, mine are still not coupling together very well. Uh, you do have to intervene more often than not to get them to couple correctly. But it does seem as though once they are together and once you have trimmed those little pegs down, that the cars do at least stay together, which is something. Now, some people are going to say, well, here's the proof. You get what you pay for. These are cheap wagons and they don't work very well. So what do you expect? Well, that, yeah, that is kind of true, isn't it? You wouldn't expect to find this sort of issue with a more reputable manufacturer's models, Backman, Athern, Walthers, whatever. Yeah, I would be a lot more surprised if this sort of issue cropped up on some models from them. But also at the same time, I've had great experiences with EVE model products before. I really think it's mainly the coupling design here that is to blame. I don't think there seems to be any particular cheapness in the way these have been manufactured, and I don't think the models would have been any more expensive to manufacture without these faults. Yeah, it's just unfortunate, isn't it, really? Because they are good value, they do look fine. I mean, I think these look great. This entire train of rolling stock cost me just a hair over £100. And overall, it's, it is great value for money, but it's difficult to recommend these to you when you have to do quite a lot to actually get them to work properly. And I say work properly, they are barely working properly. They stay on the track, they don't derail, but that's all really. It's a bit of a headache to couple them up. And uh, if you've got a big train of them, if you've got 50 or 60 of these things, it's going to be very annoying indeed. So mixed feelings, really. The value is still good. The performance is okay once they get going. But at the same time, they're not right. They're not right. Just a tiny little issue has caused so many problems. So make of that what you will. If you want to get some of these, fair enough. You know, there are definitely pros to these. The low price being one of them. But there are also issues as well. So please do bear that in mind. So, with limited expectation for success, I'm going to do the reverse points test with these. And I think this could go either way. Clearly, the couplings are extremely dodgy, so there could be a mass derailment as soon as I try this. But then, on the other hand, once coupled together, these have been performing quite nicely. So, maybe the same will be true on the points as well. But there's only one way to find out, so let's see. Backwards we go. Ah, yeah, it looked like every single one derailed one after the other there. And then the train came to a stop. Cool. <laughs> right, well, let's try that again. That could have been a fluke. Okay, round two is the failure repeatable. Let's try again. It seems like yes is the answer to that. Now, the usual caveats obviously apply. My layout is not great. It is on the carpet, as you may have noticed. If you've got a better layout, then you might not have these issues. But I should point out that I do this same test on every piece of rolling stock I review, and a catastrophic failure of this kind is very rare. In fact, I can't remember the last time it happened. Let's just try one of these cars on its own. Is it the couplings, or is there something else that's causing it? <laughs> something else. 
yeah, it's just the rear wheels of it are jumping off as it crosses over the point. Try that again more slowly. Okay, try more slowly. Yeah, it's just a lot of bumping as it goes over there. Doesn't seem like it's the coupling bars to blame anymore, but yeah, the wheels seem to be coming off. All right, try a different one. Just make sure that they're all like it. Oh dear, so not good on points either. Yeah, derailed. Right, okay, so not doing too well. Let's do an actual test on camera with all of the couplings involved. Right, so everything is now uncoupled again, including the locomotive. So all I'm going to do for this test is back the loco up. It's going to push each car back into the car behind it. And hopefully, if all goes well, they will all couple. There are six couplings to make here. Let's find out how many of them are successful. So reverse, I'm going to go quite steadily. One, two, three, four five, six. Let's push back a little bit. Now let's go forwards and see how many were a success. Locomotive to first van, fail. First van to second van, fail. Second van to third van, fail. Third van to fourth van, fail. Fourth van to fifth van, fail. Fifth van to sixth van, fail. And the last van, also a complete fail. That's actually worse than when I put them together for the first time. Some of them did actually couple. Let's try doing this more firmly. Let's just push them together. Coupled. Oh yeah. So with a bit more force, they do couple, but you don't really want to have to go along and do that, do you? So make of that what you will. Not very good. Let's do some ratings then on the boxcars from EVE model. The level of detail obviously isn't fantastic. I have mocked it down to two and a half star. I don't really mean this to be much of a criticism because clearly the relative lack of detail is reflected in the price. And the detail that is here, while basic, is okay. I mean, the molded detail looks okay. The decoration is pretty good. It's got good underframe detail, but there's very little in the way of separately fitted parts. And some of the molding is quite chunky, for instance, on the ends and on the roof. But for the money, the level of detail is okay, if not comparable to more quality manufacturers. The performance though is hard to praise. You've got the couplings which in their unmodified state will foul against points and power tracks and ballast and sleepers. They don't couple properly as I've demonstrated on camera. They don't roll very well even with the couplings repaired. The bogies are relatively stiff as well which causes extra drag around curves and of course they constantly and reliably derail across point work even with the couplings repaired. So it's just a one star. I think that's because the metal wheels are quality, so it gets a star for that, but otherwise absolute pants performance. Unless you're having these hauled by a powerful locomotive and you never plan to uncouple them, or unless you just want these to put on a shelf to display, then the performance of these models would very much stop me from recommending them to you. The quality is middle of the road, I've given it three star, I mean the manufacturing quality is nice and tidy, no visible glue or anything like that. They are fairly heavy, there's a nice metal weight on top of the chassis, 75 grams, not too bad. They are however quite plasticky on the outside, yeah, all plastic construction, I think the couplings are probably plastic as well, realistically. And the quality of the couplings is also quite poor, with a major design issue there too, where those little bars poking down from the couplings are fouling parts of the track work. Um, so yeah, three star is the best I can do. Value for money then. Now these models are cheap. £15.92 to £17.60 is what I paid, depending on whether or not they are decorated. And if these had have worked perfectly, I would have given them five star on value. But of course, cheap things are only good value if they are functional and usable. These are not, unfortunately. They are far from functional, and while you can use them, they are very, very frustrating to use, and if you want to run them over points and stuff, you're going to have a very bad time, if my experience is anything to go by. Uh, but, you know, you do get quite a lot for your money, I suppose, and the way the models look is fine, so three star. Overall, 5.24 out of 10, or a grade of E. 
grossly let down, unfortunately, by the performance. And into the logbook we go, fourth place, yeah, of course, that is bottom, below the dance hall brake van, and that's definitely where they deserve to be, unfortunately. Well folks, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, it's been an interesting review. There was quite a twist in the tail at the end there, wasn't there? I really was expecting these to be great value, great running pieces of rolling stock, like all of the other EVE model stuff I've tried. Unfortunately, these did fall down on the final hurdle of performance, and that does let the entire model down, unfortunately. But let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Have you seen this sort of issue before? Are these problems forgivable? Would you still buy them regardless? Or would you avoid these on pain of death? Do let me know what you think down in the comments. But for now, that is all I have to say for today. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you very, very soon for some more videos. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.